Right, so we got quite a few of us ready to go. I can see we got Ruth, we got Yemi, hello, we've got Mitch, Mr. Mitch Fly. Um, obviously, we got Joseph and also Laura from the EVN leadership team. And we've got Kashi, who is one of our speakers here today. So um, this was an idea that Kashi came up with, like, uh, maybe day before last. And she said, you know, let's do one for the Elite Vendors Network, especially we've been having a lot of conversations in the group. And now it's time to have a chat all together, which we can now do from the comforts of our own homes due to this technology. Um, so we're going to give it a couple more minutes for some more people to come online, but just a few rules everyone on now so far if, when you're not speaking please mute your microphone um if you have a question feel free to put it in the chat um we can uh, if you want to come on to uh on the on your camera to ask a question a bit later well, that's fine we're going to have an opportunity to do that and uh yeah it's going to be a good call we're planning to uh, end by four o'clock and um oh that's yeah. a long one Oh, <laughs> quick, quick question! Quick question, jo Joseph. Where, where are you, man? You look like you're in some special location. So where are you? No, nah, so um, you can do how, a virtual background. How do you do that thing? I've seen people do it in my church meetings. I wondered how they did it. <laughs> oh, you just go to the settings. Yes, go to. So I want to be. I want to be in Miami at the minute because what? Where I think are there's you? There's only a few York? that you can pick from. <laughs> I have no idea. It's one of them. <laughs> I just thought I'm playing my a bit boring. It is a bit boring. Dean, Dean, wh 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 where are you? Because you look like you're in some <laughs> skateboarding park or something. <laughs> Dean, you look like you're in a, a circus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm at, I'm at home, but this is one of uh, this is a print from an event that we did before, so I, I've put it up on the wall basically. So, uh, sorry, yeah. wallpaper. Yeah, that's fine. It's good, man. It's good. Hi, Charles. <laughs> hey, right. you mean Charles. Okay, so this in... lockdown needs to finish. Can I just have a rant for two seconds? Go what is this? I've been at home for this is enough. Enough of this madness. Corona, God punish you. All right, I'm done. <laughs> hey, so are we we're, we're still missing two speakers in typical, I guess. I think Matty said she needed to do her face. Yeah, um, typical. Matty's putting on mascara. African <laughs> Caribbean fashion. We're even late when it's online, um, but no worries. We've got so, nine, we've got nine right, so, people. Yeah, so exactly. So let's let, let's let's begin anyway. So thank you for the people that's um, come online and come on time. I um, really appreciate your presence. Obviously, this was quite a last minute meeting. And we just thought it would be good for all of us to just have a chat about what's going on for each of us right now. It's not a thing about numbers. It doesn't really matter how many people come on, even if it's just us, that's enough because it just gives us all a chance to be part of, you know, a community, um, part of, find out what's going on for other people in the industry. And, you know, put some faces to all the, the names that uh, we're often seeing by text and, and uh, and actually have a conversation as much as possible face to face. So we've got Miss Matty online now. We've also got uh, Shay from Love Weddings NG coming on. And the first question I want to put to all of you, I can see that it's saying that Mitch is trying to connect to his audio. I don't know what's happening there but the first question I want to put to all of you is what is going on obviously just a month ago one month ago all of us were getting ready for one of our busiest or well, another busy summer we were planning our own weddings <laughs> like from like myself we were planning our, our stags and our honeymoons and um just planning to meet with clients and we were really looking forward to uh, a new a 2020 spring season and summer season. Within the last 30 days, we have not only seen 
um, people going from their regular days at work to then fighting over anti Beck and Luro to then events events being um, closed down, businesses being shut down, panic buy-in. And now then last Monday, we've, we, we're told that we can no longer actually leave our houses for more than an hour a day um, for no more than crucial um, uh, journeys or activities. And uh, unless we're a key worker, we basically need to stay in our houses for unless we have one hour of activity a day. So how has that affected um, all of you guys? And this is to our guest speakers, of course, which are Charles, Kashi, Shay, and Matty, first of all. Who wants to go first? Charles, Matty, we, go. Matty, we can't hear you. Sorry. Um, okay, you go first. So, in terms of that, that was quite a wordy question, but I'll start with um, obviously, March is really the beginning of wedding season for a lot of us. Um, that's when the bulk of the events start and, and things like that. So, it has had a really um, big effect. Um, it's put wedding season completely on pause. Um, we've not been able to do any of the events at all. I think we did one event in February. Um, but in terms of the knock-on effect that it's had, uh, I can't say that we're doing less work. We're actually doing more work because of the nature of what I do. I'm a wedding planner. So we do, we've been doing more work to move weddings, um, you know, that have been postponed. We're so blessed that none of our clients have actually cancelled weddings. And um, we've, we've been able to respond quite well, um, you know, because when we saw all of this happening, kind of sent out a communication to all of our brides and grooms, and then also started emailing vendors in advance to say, listen, it's, if anything does happen, it's going to be postponing. Are you okay with that? You know, um, what does your agreement say, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how it's affected us. It's, you know, this is, this is very surreal. Um, like I'm slightly um, on house arrest um, to a certain degree, um, especially not being able to find things in the shops that you would normally find. So yeah, from my perspective, on a personal and business level, it's still very, very surreal. Okay, thank you. Charles Kashi. Ladies first. Right then. Uh, as a business, um, this wasn't expected, obviously. Uh, no one expected this. So it's just, it's literally just puts us in a deep end. And it took us a while to sort of respond. Um, but we proactively contacted all our clients even before they did, because I think well not all of our clients but some of them were in denial um so they you know they just assumed that it would all just go away and they would just proceed with the wedding and you know they just wanted to see how you know we could support but we proactively contacted the ones that you know were able to you know agree that it just doesn't seem to be the right time to quickly postpone and move their dates because what I, I find now is the ones that are looking to move their dates, most of the dates that they want are gone. But this is because some people just, you know, actively just made that yeah. action right when, you know, it all started. So uh, personally, <laughs> like Matty said, I feel like I'm on house arrest. Um, but I, we, I'm personally, I'm taking the opportunity to like exercise and just, you know, sort out family and, and do stuff. But on a business level, it's, you know, I'm not going to lie, it's just been a roller coaster. It's, it's just really put us in a very tight position with clients that, you know, either want to cancel or do not want to be realistic with their move, moving. Most people actually want to stay in that summer period or early summer, which is still very gray area in the business because we're not sure, no one can predict what will be happening. Indeed. Thank you. And uh, Shay from Love Weddings NG, are you on the line? Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes. What's your, oh. so I don't know if you got on for my question, but in a nutshell, what is going on right now? What, and what, what, what has, in the last 30 days, so much has changed for us? 
what's mm. your perspective on it what's what's been happening for you yeah so um definitely things have changed i don't think anybody really expected what happened so it's kind of thrown everyone i think upside down a bit but um what's happening with me is it's making me really really question and these are things that i think most business owners would have had on their roadmap already but it's making me think you know how stable is my business is it structured in the right way you know if something like this were to happen do i have funds for x number of months to sustain the business do i have um you know incoming streams of income basically how how stable is is what i'm doing so i think it's really giving me um, room to think of potentially things that i should be doing um you know just opportunities that might be out there that maybe i haven't really paid too much attention to and yeah it's just i think that for me has been the biggest thing that i have focused on over the last couple of days okay thank you and mr charles Emeka. It, it it's it's been frustrating um I'm supposed to be on a plane to Nigeria in the next three days to do two weddings, one birthday, and a traditional marriage. Um, that is £10,000 I have to give back. <clears throat> um, as some of you know, I'm also building an event center in Nigeria. And over the last couple of weeks, I've bought all the building materials for work to start the money that was going to come from those events was what was going to be used to start those buildings. Everything has had to stop. Last Tuesday, um, my grandmom also passed away and my dad's younger sister also passed away. So I've got two people in the mortuary right now um, oh, wow. with no movement. But like I like to say, rainbows come after storms. We'll figure it out. It's frustrating. Um, my kids are tapping me. Are you not going to work? What are you doing here? You know, but um, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But we've done the first week. I can't do much more of this. So let's see what happens. Okay, you're saying you can't do much more of this, and we are literally Ooh. just beginning. We we don't know how long this is going to last. We 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 are told that this is uh, a three week lockdown as or a, you know, a nationwide three-week lockdown but it could go on for longer um so obviously some of you here are um you know you're you're you you've got businesses that need to operate um obviously either here or abroad you've got families with children at home etc so what are you doing right now i guess to kind of it's still so new but what are you doing to kind of adjust to um what's going on and it's changing daily every single day we're hearing new announcements um different things happening but what what are you trying to do to i guess to stay proactive and keep yourself um mentally stable well for me um nothing has changed for my kids because my kids are homeschooled anyway my kids have been all my kids are homeschooled so nothing has changed for them they're used to this formula it's for me, having to be at home with them and not leaving the house, that's the challenging part for them. They're like, what's this man doing here? But in terms of their school timetable, nothing has changed for them. Okay, great. And uh, any of the others, go for it. Um, I think uh, one of the things that has probably changed for me, I'm very used to working from home, but again, I said I feel like I'm under house arrest because you know you can't just get up and go out and you know go to the cinema and do those regular things that you do or even for example I had um, site visits booked um, even last week you know having to uh, you know email venues and say okay you know I'm taking it that this is cancelled as a result of what's currently going on um, and I feel like I've really I'm quite structured anyway but the level of structure to keep myself motivated um, that I've had to put in place is it's literally I'm now planning my time to make sure that I'm being productive and proactive hour by hour because what was happening I think I got to like last week last week on um, Tuesday and I was just like I'm tired 
I don't know why I'm so like I'm at home but I'm feeling even more tired than I usually would be so I literally started planning every single hour what I'm doing and regular regular breaks things like that I mean with myself I have an assistant so we work remotely anyway so in terms of how our business works that's not really been affected but I am finding I'm having to schedule more times um, in the afternoon um, early evening to speak with clients and now it's kind of like we will check in like once every two weeks email updates every week we are literally, we've been exhausted being on the phone, um, having conference calls for, for one hour. Some of my brides, um, and I think Kesh mentioned it, some of them are a little bit like in the twilight zone. They're, they're, they're not kind of, they're not kind of getting it. Like this is the current situation. They're asking me for answers to things. And I'm kind of like, hmm, I have to ask the venue. I need to come back to you on that. And it's kind of like working with definitive dates right now, even if, even for some of our brides, like July, you know, it, you want to be positive and we'll all hope that this situation is, you know, we're over it by, by July and everybody's out and back at work and doing what they, um, quote unquote, would normally be doing. Um, however, no one can really kind of guarantee that. Um, and I feel like the media is, is just the most unhelpful tool, um, you know, when it comes to, it's, it's really causing some people some sort of trauma in their head that they're not they're not getting what's going on some people are getting it and they're feeling like the world is falling apart so it has been a bit difficult but I've put structure in place um goals and, and things that I need to kind of achieve day by day not just for myself but for for the business as well that's how I'm, I'm taking it a day at a time literally day by day that's all we can do right now and uh so Shay and Kashi please yeah, I was just going to add to what um, my teacher said. And I think for me, it's been the same, just trying to structure. I think you get into the habit of just because you're at home, you can get so used to your space and you're not actually achieving much. You're just kind of ticking the hours and the minutes are going and you don't even know if you're achieving anything different. So I've definitely started to try and do the same things I would have done before. So waking up at the same time that I used to wake up you know, before COVID-19, make sure you get your showering in the morning, literally go to the desk like you are in the office, even if you're not physically in like the office space and having like a to-do list and making sure you get through. And I think it's reducing those big goals into actual small achievable things as well. Mm -hmm. That's something that's been really, really useful for me. So um, it could be maybe reach out to one client a day or reach out to five clients or, you know, do a one-to-one -one with my teammates but yeah, it's basically just being very clear on what I want to achieve every single day. And some days you hit it, some days you don't, but at least it keeps, it keeps you kind of on that stable, you know, place. Thank you for that. And Kashi? Yeah. Um, also in this current limitation where, you know, most, I would say at least majority of the businesses are sort of face to face, um, you'd find that you're actually changing your, your business model to, to fit and to adapt to the current situation. So the current situation is excluding anything physical. So you, you, what, what I've done personally is I've put all my meetings into like Skype calls. I'm trying to adapt to the current climate. I'm trying to make, do things that are more virtual rather than, you know, obviously I can't, <laughs> there is no other way. It's not like you, you've got so many choices now. Um, also having a structure like, you know, pretty much all of you have said so having a structure sticking to it and adapting to the current limitation and just working with it and just making it work okay great stuff we have um quite a few people online now i just want to um say welcome to the newcomers if you have a question please feel free to put it into the chat box if you haven't used zoom before just explore the options around your screen you will be able to um, find the chat and you can put some questions in there and we'll definitely um, get your questions asked before the end of the chat. We are aiming to end at 4 p.m. So just over an hour from now, we're gonna try and get through as many conversations as possible. And um, also we have, uh, Laura is uh, assisting me on this call moderating. So she may message you and stuff every now and then. Please mute your mic if you can. Uh, if you're not speaking also. So guys, obviously one of the kind of juiciest questions of this conversation that everyone 
I guess a lot of people want to know about is what do we do as small business owners when it comes to people um, requesting refunds? Because obviously we take deposits to keep our businesses going and to prepare for people's events. And we usually take the full balance. I know everyone's got slightly different rules, but I usually take the full balance like 30 days or more before the event. So I can obviously, um, you know, make sure I get the money in beforehand. So some, some, for some events I have, I fully have their, I have all of their money. For some events, I just have their deposit. Charles just said he gave back 10 grand to people in Nigeria. I think he's a very good man for doing that because I don't think they would have got it back for me so quickly. But <laughs> how, how are you guys dealing with any clients that don't want to postpone, they want to cancel their events and they are, they are asking for refunds? The doodle. Uh, who's that? I'll go first um, on that one. Am I allowed to have the other copy in the picture? Oh. Please mute your mic if you've just joined us. Thank you. That's Kojo's kids. Is it me? Oh, sorry, guys. Please, please mute your mic if you can. <laughs> um, who's going first? Kesh. Go on. Okay, now. yes. All right. Thanks, Matty. Um, I, I think we all have different contracts and this is where we all have to revert to our contract and we will actually actually have to action what it says i do feel that after all this is done people will be changing their contracts <laughs> because um you know covid obviously is one of those circumstances that you know it's really hard to place it's not predicted you know no one knew this was going to happen luckily we haven't had any clients say that they want to cancel but we've had people speak along those lines and one of our brides actually said oh maybe I should just do a registry and just you know forget about the party because I don't think after all this is done you know people would want to party I think the nation would be very sober you know and you'd have people like that saying you know she's already speaking along those lines so as a business I think we all have to revert to our contracts obviously Charles um, as mentioned that he's given a, a 10 grand refund this is because he's honoring what is already on, on his T TNCs um, personally I, I think it would be a lot of money to, to, to refund for most businesses at this time and you know although we have to be compassionate um, I learned yesterday that we have to also relax our contracts because you know this is a very hard time for, for businesses but this is also a very hard time for bride and grooms this is a hard time for most of our clients so we have to we have to be really relaxed with our contract if there is a way that you can give back um maybe as a credit note um you know whatever your services are so if someone wanted to postpone their wedding or say for example cancel their wedding as opposed to speaking speaking in, in the lines of having a full refund you could sort of you know maybe a credit note for maybe a birthday a christening party and they could they could reuse that that's you know something I've been thinking of as a business okay thank you Kashi um, who wants to go next on this um I'll just add um, to that because I think you, in terms of people revamping their um, contracts slash, slash agreements, um, that is something that needs to be um, reviewed. But I've, more, I've dealt with, I've spoken to a few vendors uh, and a few vendors have reached out to me because they have had this issue where clients are asking for money back um, or a full refund and the, the vendors that I found that are actually struggling are those that had no contract in the first place do you understand as in you sent you maybe you didn't even send an invoice maybe you whatsapped your account details so uh, I think, and those are those are the people that I've kind of been um I've kind of reached out and asked the question and when you drill down to it is do you have an agreement in the first place um, obviously being sensitive to the the current situation I do feel like we need to be a bit flexible um, we're really blessed we haven't had anybody who's wanted um, a, a refund or uh, counseling they've all kind of just wanted to postpone their date um, which we've been able to do quite easily uh, but I do think that we we do need to kind of exercise a bit of um, one empathy two common sense um, and and three really looking at okay well you've you paid a deposit 
It says it's non-refundable. And like Keshi suggested, I was speaking to another, um, another vendor and they've done the same thing in terms of giving a credit note. So yeah, I was meant to play for your wedding. Your wedding isn't happening because you're, you know, your this there was a very particular case it was you know it was very understandable as to why they weren't going to have the wedding anymore um and this vendor said you know what i'm going to give you a credit note and whether it is your child's uh first birthday naming ceremony whatever it may be we will be there to do that <clears throat> that is i hope that helps some of you guys who might be going back and forth and um having a tug of war with some of the clients but i think it also depends on the amount as well so dean in your case usually it's thousands you know um and for for some it may not be as much so we need to kind of exercise like i said those three things are really quite key yeah okay just before yeah. we move on to shay so we've got um david emery on the cordas arts um, even in terms of postponing, how far in the future? Because I believe it still needs to be within reason. I think that's a good question for you, Matty. So in terms of uh, how far in the future, uh, and this is also something I've seen with, with venues. Uh, some venues have said, okay, your, date, your wedding date was uh, May 2nd. So between May 2nd, the date that your event is meant to be and may 2nd 2012 this is when this is valid until now if you're providing a service that um means that you can only do one job a day then this is this obviously affects you quite differently so if you're providing equipment for us we, i only do one word in a day i don't require any more stress than that so it, it does mean that if they've moved from one day to another it has taken up it has occupied a potential date from somebody else however with the current situation that's where you you i think you need to to use the, your discretion someone said to me oh no mate we're going to actually move the wedding to 2022 then i now start talking about you know what we're going to have to do is look at um, reviewing our agreement in terms of payments and things like that because they're different they're different things that come into play you know someone was telling me 2022 and we're in 2020 right now, you might postpone it maybe to 2021 within that 12 month period. I feel like at this stage, that is reasonable. However, if we're talking about two years time, uh, you know, <coughs> add some, some zeros. Okay, thank you, Charles, you're gonna go next. Please, and yeah. Charles, yeah, please tell us more about this. Uh, again, e Emery's asking why, why did you give back all ten thousand pounds? What was that ten thousand pounds, dollars, naira? Like what? Pounds, what currency? Pounds. So, was that? so, <laughs> so, um, I never. So those, that ten thousand pounds, that's four clients. Okay, um, none of them got back their deposits because their events are still going ahead with me or without me. So, number one, how I see it is. My name and reputation is worth more than the 2,500 pounds that I'm giving back. I will still make that money. Um, number two, like Matty said, these are really, they're unique times. They're unique times, nobody foresaw this coming. Um, I'm sort of like I'm in a position where I can handle that blow, so to speak, if, if, if that makes sense. Um, and it was funny, just about a year and a half ago, myself and my wife, we started putting away emergency funds, not knowing that this was coming, but just saying to ourselves, we should always have a certain amount of money just in case. Lo and behold, a year and a half later, boom, here we go, needing to put our emergency funds to use. So one thing I'll say is, everyone should use this particular situation to plan for the next one so create some emergency funds make a decision i need to have five to ten thousand pounds sitting somewhere simply for an emergency it's not for investing it's not for anything else it's simply for an emergency like this um and what i've really been using this time for is to say what unfinished projects do i have that i haven't completed and that's what I'm doing with this time. So those, that 2,500 pounds I gave back, even the, the wedding I did on 
last Saturday at the Crown Plaza, the interesting wedding that the police came and shut us down at 7, 7.30. He did call me the day before and say, what is your stand if we have a lockdown? I said, if we have a lockdown, you will get back your final fee, but you won't get back your deposit. Because since you've paid that deposit, I've been turning away all other forms of work. So. Okay, great. We definitely need to ask you about that wedding that took place last Saturday. But just before we do, let's, let's, let's ask uh, Shay's opinion on uh, refunds and stuff. And because Shay's been a big, as for as long as I've known her, she's been a big advocator of contracts, paperwork, right. and having your stuff in order. Mm -hmm. So at this time, Shay, what, what, what do you have to say on this? Yeah, I, I think everyone said everything I would have said, to be honest. I think Matty, Matty was spot on. Everyone who's reached out to me have been people who have no contracts at all. People who have contracts, from my experience since this happened, haven't really had any issues. The interesting thing is, while you mentioned people are looking for refunds, there are actually a lot of people that I've come in contact with, um, vendors who are actually managing to get more money off clients even in this scenario, because prices have gone up for certain things, and I have proof of that as well. So it's just interesting. I think for me, my tips would be, um, while I understand that there might be um, customers like that or clients like that, I think don't wait for them to actually reach out to you. This is the mistake that a lot of vendors are actually doing. You know that people are, are going to have questions. We know that these things are quite troubling. A lot of brides are already stressed. So as a vendor, this is not the time to really sit there and wait for them to come to you with their complaints. You need to be one step ahead. Whether or not you have a contract, it, it really doesn't matter. Go out there and actually be like, okay, we know this is what's going on. These are, you know, these are our terms. This is your contract. Kind of be one step ahead. Because when you do that, then it kind of takes back that person's, you know, um, whatever they were going to do in terms of fighting for a refund. So I think that's number one. The second thing is when you're, agreeing to these new um, agreements. And someone in the chat just put it as, you need to definitely be clear that it's as a gesture of goodwill, so important. You need to make sure that when you're making agreements, especially when it sits outside your contract, make sure it's very clear to that customer or that client that you are doing it as a discretionary um, decision. It's not something that you're you know, obliged to do. So make sure that that's really, really clear in your paperwork. And also please reissue a new amended contract as well. So that it's very clear what you're agreeing to in this new terms and um, when you're doing that. And I think the last one is just really, really be human. At the end of the day, Charles has said it, your reputation will definitely go, you know, beyond. The way people deal with this scenario is really, really going to tell how ready your brand is to deal with similar situations in future. I know COVID-19 is quite a big deal, but it's no different to you know, you encountering any other scenario, you know, that could have happened. And I think how you deal with this really as a company will really, really tell a lot about you. This could bring some people 20 clients. And for some people, this literally might end your career. So it's really important that you are human, but also really, really professional and that you protect yourself as well, because, you know, you can go to one extreme and suffer. But, so that's my, that's my view on it. Okay, great stuff. Thank you. Um, I know there's, there's, there's definitely lots of talk about, I guess, um, you know, thinking long term, being empathetic in this time, um, you know, trying to deal with customers reasonably and showing some sensitivity and stuff like that. Um, but what, what, what advice would you guys give to the people who are kind of living you know, literally day to day with their business. They don't have any forward, they don't have any plan going forward. They don't have any reserve money. They don't have any emergency funds. Literally, they, or they, they've been put out of work as well as losing their businesses, you know, their, their income from their business. And literally they may have a hundred pounds left in the bank and a client's asking for uh, a refund on that hundred pounds. What, 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 what can you say to them? Because it's, it's, I guess it's all good when you've got a, when you're, when you've got a bit of a cushion to talk mm -hmm. about the long-term vision, but some people can't see past their next meal, you know? Mm -hmm. So what, what, what would you say to those kind of vendors that, that are out there? Um, Shay uh, mentioned it when she said that, you know, 
um, some people are now even finding they're making a little bit more money. I, 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 I'm a big study. I love to study people. I love to study businesses and business strategy. And um, one of like one of my co-vendors, um, someone that I work with, uh, and I'll say her name because I think everybody should kind of um, take a leaf out of her book, especially if you're finding it hard at this time to generate any kind of income or, or more income, um, is Joy Edinaga. She has literally, I think she, did, she must have done it in like four hours. She literally put together some sort of um, course, consultation course that she can do, not just for, for brides, but for anyone who wants to learn how to do makeup and she's literally de delivering something and I don't, I can't remember how much it is, but, um, she's just literally delivering tutorials, um, virtually to people and whether it's, she's, even if she was charging them 25 pounds for an hour, it's more than some people get paid. Do you get what I'm saying? So she's, she's managed to, to do that with, I guess, having a headset, having a computer and also having a website which allows her the facility for um, people to pay online directly to her. So, so, there, so I think we have to be um, uh, creative as well in this time. I don't think that there's nothing that anybody can't do at, at this time. And I think if you're struggling um, if you're struggling from like, let's say a social media perspective and you're like, oh my gosh, what should I post? Because right now, you know, no one wants to be seeing weddings um, because of the current situation. That's not necessarily true. As long as you are seen to be being empathetic, like you have that level of empathy, you're, you're plugged in with what's currently going on and you connect and engage with your audience and you're having that conversation. But at the same time, bring a, bring a bit of positivity and um, light with what you're doing. It, people will stay engaged. They will stay, they'll stay tuned. They'll be even waiting for, to hear the next thing that you're going to say. Um, I mean, it's a strategy that we we are looking to implement. I just ain't had the time. <laughs> um, but it's something that I would advise every vendor to do. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, what can I do right now? And don't necessarily think about what you can get as well. Think about what you have to give. So if it is giving a tip, like for example, um, there was a young lady who, um, she does nails, right? And no one can come in to do their nails. People like me who do their nails very regularly, we're like, what are we going to do? Like, I've still got my nails on. How am I going to get these off? Because if I can't go to the nail salon um, for three weeks, like, I don't know. What am I going to do? And what she did, um, at, for no cost, she's not getting any money back from it, is she posted a video of how to remove your acrylic nails at, at home. And you know what that's going to do? It's going to cause people to be more loyal. It's going to cause people to go back to her when she reopens and we can all get back to our day to day because she has given something because she knows that people would have needed um, that particular advice at that point in time. So think about what you guys can give, um, whether it's giving to your audience or maybe directly giving to your peers as well so maybe you're a photographer what tips can you give or maybe um come up with a fan challenge that people can do with their cameras whilst at home think of there's loads of things going on right now and it's about tapping into um you know what you can i think what you can give to keep your audience engaged because i really really strongly feel that this thing is going to pass but when it passes do not find your business in the gutter and you've been putting it on pause for the whole of this time you it would it will be uh, it will be a big shame if we all do that you know thank you so much um and it's it's a little bit late in the day but i'm actually going to introduce quickly each speaker because i uh you know we didn't do it at the beginning but so I'll let you guys know so matty is a, a luxury wedding planner from the uk we have um charles and mecca who is an mc a um, public speaker and author we also have kashi from um eden event design who does hire and decor um for weddings and corporate events and we also have shay um, who is an african wedding resource and consulting um, who runs an African resource and consulting company, which is Love Weddings NG. They've got a massive, massive following 
on social media. And um, why, why I want to I want to focus the next question to Shay. So this is a question I was going to ask later, but Matty kind of just brought it up now, which is about um, about making money right now. You know, a lot of people have kind of just stopped posting on Instagram. A lot of people have given up. A lot of people feel like there is no hope in a way. But Shay, what do you what would you say to the vendors about making money right now? One, is it a bad is it is it bad or kind of immoral or, or unethical to try and get money in from all the different ways you can? And um, if you believe that we we can make money during this time, what would you suggest uh, um, on top of what Matty has just said? Yeah, no, it's never ever a bad thing to make money off a situation like this. Just, I think the question is, what exactly are you offering? What do you have to sell that people might want? I think Matty's example of joy was just perfect. That literally is, for me, an example of how you can actually make money, but also in a very, very smart and sensible way. So you are actually offering, and if you look at the prices, I think the most expensive one, if I'm not wrong, was um, from Joy's packages was around 55 or 65 pounds. I mean, compared to what she probably charges, that is a steal. But because I guess it doesn't involve a lot of traveling or, you know, moving things around and equipment, then it's still very, very sensible. So it'll never be unethical to to try and make money. But I think it's just you really, really need to dig, dig deep and find out what do you have that you can offer people and um, that they can pay for. Another example is my consultation services. Usually it's so difficult to get people to book a time because everybody's so busy trying to work out with you know weddings and everything. But now everybody has time. They're sat you know, at home. I've literally done since this COVID-19 situation started, I think I've done about five. And it's just because people just have the time that they never ever had before. And people are inquiring and actually willing to pay and willing to you know push way more than they ever would have been so I think always make sure that you have a product or a package or that you're thinking one step ahead so that when opportunities like this come up you you're able to kind of marry the two and then get some income on the back of it okay Shay this is a little chance to plug what you do but just tell us what, what exactly does your consultation um, consist of what does it look like yeah and so, roughly how much does it cost if you're, if you're able to share that as well Sure. Yeah. So it's usually um, it's I focus a lot on, on digital because I really, really believe that digital is the future. This for me is another example of how if you were digitally enabled, this really would not shake you. If you had a website that was able to maybe take payments that could do courses, you know, it makes it really, really easy for you to adapt because, you know, it's just easy as it is. So my um, consultation services um, really focus on digital marketing strategies. And essentially it would be an hour session and I charge 45 pounds per hour. And it could be a, talking about anything that you really, really want to talk about. And that is to do with digital marketing. So I do sessions on um, rebranding. I do sessions on just analyzing your website. Some people just want me to do an audit of exactly what, you know, their brand is out there. It could be search engine optimization. It could be how you want to boost awareness of your brand or social media, anything that's digital marketing oriented, essentially. It's your one hour, you know, for me to sit with you and really, really spend my time and analyze everything and really really give you clear goals on what you can do next and yeah i've had really good feedback so i think it is us it's usually quite useful from everyone who's actually taken it i think okay great please put the uh details of how to contact you or how people book one of these sessions into the chat thank you um so that if it's just in case anyone on the call wants to um you know take advantage of that so now mr emeka we have to come to you to ask you about what was going on last Saturday. We obviously, I was what, listen, I was one of the people that was in denial about this, yeah? Like, I was like, you know, I was even saying to Mary, nah, it's fine, it's just like the flu, nothing <coughs> happened. You know, I was very much like gung ho, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna socialize, I'm gonna catch the train nothing's going to happen to us until about two weeks ago where it started to get a little bit more seriously serious sorry but one week ago <laughs> you posted in our group that you were hosting a wedding and then you said that you guys are going to be doing social distancing but on but <laughs> when we saw the tables 
people were sitting right next to each other at the tables. It was a small room and the tables was right next to the dance floor. The, the dance floor was right next to the head table. Please tell us, why did that event go ahead? How did that happen? And yeah, it, it just seems crazy. But please tell us a bit more about that. Um. <laughs> Like, like we heard in the group, I think Crown Plaza do not want to be giving people their money back. That's the first thing. So all the bookings they have, they were trying to keep as many of their bookings done and out of the way. From my understanding, the groom had spoken to the venue and said, is there any reason to cancel? And the venue told them no. But what happens at Crown Plaza, it's like, if you, you can be in a building across the road and look into the venue and see what's happening. So obviously there are tenants that live in the apartments across the road that have seen what's happening and they're the people that have called the police. Um, number one, his parents and the bride's family had all flown in from Nigeria. Number two, the bride is pregnant. It was sort of like they had to do it now. So unless there was a lockdown, they were going to go ahead with it. I had already received the money. I didn't want to give it back. I'm already giving back so much money on the other side. So let's see if we can get it done. And my contract with him was as, as if I reach the venue, I've shown up for work. So Crown Plaza were happy to go ahead. The bride and groom were happy to go ahead. Their parents had already flown in for the wedding. His best man gave his speech via video call because he couldn't leave Nigeria because planes were now shutting down. Um, in fact, I had two friends who are UK based that were trying to get back from Nigeria and the flights were costing 3,020 pounds for an economy seat with BA, the last flight coming out was 3,020 pounds. Wow. And we all had to chip in and get them back. Um, so that was that. Once the neighbors had called the police, the police had come, then they told the, the police said, look, we'll give you an hour to wrap up your event and get out of there. The groom wanted to kick up a fuss and I said to him, listen, you have got married. We speeded things up, so we did all speeches, first dance, throwing of the bouquet, and everything within about an hour. And then it was, good night, God bless, and everyone left. So you saw the alarm. Um, I guess, as Yemi, Yemi said, um, that was their way of asking us to leave. So we left. Wow. The last wedding in the UK before lockdown. <laughs> Kashi, what, yeah. what, what's, what's your thoughts on that, Kashi? Like, would you have gone ahead if, if, if you if you were due to provide your services for that wedding would you have still sent your team there would you still have gone there um what, what what's your what's your perspective on it uh it's a very tricky <laughs> no i wasn't charles was I was just, no no i wasn't i was actually just trying to see um how it could have been possible even even with all the you know the extras that they've put in you know the five people on the table of 10, you know, and all, and all those stuff that you said they've put in just to make sure that they are complying with the rules. Um, but but the, the question is, you see, a wedding is a very intimate event. And, you know, how would you then ensure that, you know, the safety measures are being put in whereby people would come together and, and dance on the dance floor or people would, you know, go on a buffet and just everyone gets a spoon and everyone's eating, you know, are you going to sanitize it every single time? It, it just seems to be, for me, it just seems to be a breeding ground for this type of stuff. And back to Dean's question, would I have done it? Um, I doubt it. <laughs> um, but this is because Charles and I do two different things. So... I don't know if he, if he applies to someone else's business, if they would have gone ahead and provided the services because a DJ literally is in a booth, you know, no, he doesn't really need to interact with anyone. Yeah. Um, um, DJ, um, somebody had on blue gloves the whole day. I think I saw um, that. Uh, and, and also what they did was they had already laid the cutlery on the table 
Um, another thing we had to do was when I was calling the tables, I was literally calling one table and asking them to one table at a time and then giving like a two, three, four minute gap in between. It took forever. It was, it was a nightmare, to be honest. It was frustrating, but mission accomplished, I guess. It's done. I, I just wanted to add something. Um, and I think this is where, because I know there are a few um, planners who are logged in. Um, and this is where we really have to take a bit of, um, we have to use common sense here. There is no way if that was a wedding that we were doing, that would have gone ahead. Um, only because the guidelines that had been given, and I think we have a level of responsibility um, as well, um, as when, when you're planning a wedding, you kind of take a bit of ownership over what goes, what, what's meant to happen and what goes on. And I feel like if maybe that particular client had had, um, you know, maybe they weren't being advised properly. And if the venue, like I, I argue with venues regularly <laughs> for fun sometimes because they, they, you know, some of the things that they're asking us to do or asking us not to do, it doesn't work. And especially at this time as well, um, there've been a few occasions where it's like, you said, what now? You, you're going to take, you, you're not going to move the date, but I don't understand why. Are you even working at work? Are you even in your office right now? Are you not working from home? This is why we want to change the date. So I feel like we, as, as vendors, we need to also, other than not wanting to give money back, we, we really have to take some responsibility. I have liability insurance. And even for my staff, I take responsibility um, for a lot of things that go on on that day. Um, even if those things are not my responsibility, it automatically, it automatically comes back down um, to, to you as the quote unquote planner, you know? So, you know, I don't think that wedding should have, it shouldn't have, because like now we're hearing events that happened a month ago, people, two people have passed away and one person is in hospital and et cetera, et cetera. Imagine that being the event that just went on. And as a, and as a couple, as a bride and groom, them actually having that on their head, like, oh my gosh, if we hadn't had our event, maybe, you know, all these people wouldn't have got ill. It's just not, some things are not worth, like, your life. If we don't have good health, what do we have again? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So we need to be like, you know, as much as it's, yeah, let's, let's get paid, we also have to... <laughs> oh my gosh, you're just... Doing <laughs> you move your microphone, please. Oh. <laughs> no, that's, that's not, this is not a good time for that joke, child. Um, in, to, to add to what Matthew said, we've got to be alive to get paid. Um, it's only anyone who's alive that can get paid. But also, if we remember um, when this all first started, the, the first industry that was shut down was the events industry. And there is a reason why um, the, event, the events and sporting industry, I would say events and sporting alongside. This is because we are a social gathering industry you know we're not logistic drivers we're not we don't just pick up some things from and then just drop them in front of Sainsbury's you know we have to come in contact with people is a social gathering so if we are um in the front line of the events industry um, you know it would be a good opportunity to sort of sometimes you just have to you have to jay your bride you have to jay your clients to the right path because sometimes they do not know they just do not know exactly all right, listen, we, we're gonna, uh, we're approaching the last half an hour of the call. I wanna get some of the callers who are on to come on, like show your faces, say who you are, what you do, and ask your question to either the whole panel or just one specific person in the panel. I'm just gonna ask one more question so you guys can prepare yourself for that. And this is to everyone. How long do you think it's going to take the industry to recover? Yeah, so obviously we've got a three-week lockdown guideline and then after that, people, you know, I've been getting all kinds of messages. Some people saying that, you know, by the time July comes, events are going to start, uh, are going to be permitted to happen again as usual, August, September, October, etc. But it's not only just about when we are allowed to do the events, it's also about the, me the, the mentality that people's going to have with socialising with other people again. So realistically i know this is obviously happening 
uh, to all of us at the same time and you know none of us have been through this before but how long do you think it's going to take before the events industry gets going again and anyone can answer that one. anyone okay. I'll go first. Um, I think there's definitely no way of knowing for sure because no one has a crystal ball. But I predict it will probably take six to 12 months um, just for things to normalize again. Because if we think of the disruption to manufacturing for bridal designers down to, you know, just people having to postpone dates and move things, you know, to even people who are saying July now, there's no guarantee that things are going to happen in July to potentially people who are thinking of destination weddings and how that plays in with all the restrictions on travel. I think definitely six to 12 months would be for me um, a period when things will then start to normalize. And I say this only because I look at the industry events, so things like London Bridal Fashion Week. Um, I looked at Lagos Bridal Fashion Week as well. Most things are being moved at the moment to September and beyond. I think London has tried to move it to June, but, you know, I hope that still works. But everything definitely is moving towards the end of the year at the moment. So that's just my prediction. Okay, great. Um, I mean, I, you know, I really can't tell. I don't think anyone can. Um, but, but let's start from, you know, how long is it going to take for, in, for us as a nation to get back on ground? Um, we've been given what 12 weeks but I do think the 12 weeks is sort of like a beginning sort of frame and then just for them to buy time to see how things are you know they're gonna go having looked at the graph of Italy and, and China and the rest of them I don't think we're gonna be back up and running in 12 weeks I don't think it's gonna take as long as six months I can't remember on top of my head um how long the Spanish influenza to, to sort of die down for people to get back into their normal lives. But I do think that we were far cry from um, the Spanish influenza days. I think um, we've got more technology, we've got more hands, we've got, you know, more, more, um, more background medical um, answers than we did back then. So I do think in a few months, maybe about three to four months I think things will normalize itself but the real question is can we say that you can have um, an, an event that you dreamed of in about three months time I think that's the real question I think the nation will be very sober I think people will still be worried to sit on a table with others <laughs> yeah, I think some people would just have that phobia of going anywhere, even when, you know, they, they're giving their reassurance that, you know, there's a vaccine out there or, you know, you can test yourself. People would just be very wary. And I think this can have an, it could have an adverse effect on the events industry for a while. Um, I do feel, I'm just going to add to um, mm -hmm. what Kesha said. Um, I think as a people, as human beings, um, we can be very resilient. <laughs> Someone's just joined us with their mic on. <laughs> um, I think as a nation, we are, are very resilient um, and can be very resilient, more resilient than we know. Uh, and in terms of the services as well, like the service industry, um, event industry, I don't think it's going to take us too long to get back up and running once we get the green flag. I don't think that's the issue. The, I think one of the bigger issues will be the trust, like Kesh mentioned, people actually feeling like, okay, um, yeah, I'm ready to go out because people are suffering a lot of anxiety. This is... is I, you can already see mental health cases as you watch Instagram. And I can't even watch Instagram for too long, but you can already see like red flags, like people are losing it. So um, I think, yes, in terms of level of confidence and things like that, once people get the green flag, service wise, ah, people will be back to business. However, it's whether your business survives for the next one, two, three months. That's actually the question. It's not about how quickly can we get started again. Nah, we can, we can, if they tell us it's okay tomorrow, everyone come for vaccination at your GP, we'll, people will be outside. There will be street parties. You'll find DJ come out. We can, we can organize a party in two hours. 
that's how I know we can do things. Even in terms of weddings, like, I mean, as long as the vendors are available, like for me, it takes us 24 hours, let's get it done. So those are the two main elements are, will certain businesses survive in this time that is like dry season that we are on lockdown? Um, and the other, the other thing is the confidence of um, people actually being able to come out. I think those are the two main factors that will really determine how long this is all going to take. Um, you know, I'm praying that by July, you know, that we can, we can actually start having weddings and everyone can, um, you know, whether you want to attend or not, hopefully, but again, Shay said it, we do not have a crystal ball. Um, all we can do is be very, very hopeful, you know, um, and stay extremely optimistic because the negativity is already out there. Um, and, and as an industry, we need to stay positive. We need to stay focused um, and we need to stay alive as well, you know, and this is how we keep it alive. 100%, very wise words. Um, Charles and Mecca, what's your thoughts? Once the green light is given, the parties will immediately crack on. Everybody's going to party. I, I, I don't think... Dean, like me and you were having a conversation yesterday. Um, my personal opinion is fear is being in submission for the vaccines that they want to bring in next. That's my personal opinion. Um, once the green light is given, I believe people will immediately, in this week that I'm complaining about, I've also had six people pay deposits for new dates and some of those have, be, have been because maybe the MC they had booked is no longer available for their next day and they're trying to lock in straight away. So they were like, can you hurry up? Can you hurry up? Can you send out your bank details? So, um, I think once the green light is given i think people will go straight back into it and your phones and emails will be popping because people want the services again let, let us remember that whether we like it or not our industry has become fashionable that's the reality it's fashionable to have a particular kind of wedding it's fashionable to have a particular kind of event and you didn't die now, you didn't fall sick, you didn't get rushed to hospital. So you're mistaken in the moment based on what you're seeing. But as soon as this is done, people will get straight back on. I, I remember being in um, Nigeria, my cousin called me and said that he had just been, had armed robbers come in to where they were drinking in the bar, take their mobile phones and their car keys. As soon as the guys got off the ground, the guy said, ah, can I have a bottle of Guinness? That's, that's us. You know, as soon as we, we, we get out of it, have more fun. That's my opinion. Thank you so much, Charles. Had a message from Mary Kay saying, hello, Dean, as a new member in the industry, I'm pleased to have joined this conversation. This is interesting, and thanks to all the speakers. We hope and pray everything gets back to normality soon. Yes, thank you for that. Marie. Um, so we had, we've, we got DJ Emery saying quite a few funny things in the comments, but one thing he said is that people weren't worried before because they didn't believe that black people could get the coronavirus, which, <laughs> which was going around the internet. But then I think um, some cases closest, closer to home uh, became um, apparent and it started to really hit us in, in, in a major way. So I've got some more questions, but does anyone want to come on to this? Does anyone want to unmute their, 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 their microphone and yeah, Yemi, Yemi said he wanted to come and say a few words. Yemi, are you around? Yemi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you from New York oh, City. Yeah, hello everybody. This is Yemi Oshinkoya, um, of Koseba, based in New York, but I, I come to London about every eight weeks. In fact, very briefly, I was, in New York, I was in London two weeks ago. I was meant to come back on Tuesday when Trump added the UK to the travel ban. So I heard that on Saturday. I was fortunate enough to dash back on Sunday. Now, in, New, in the US, we are about two weeks ahead of what's happening in London or in the UK. So um, it's unfortunately it's going to get slightly more serious than what's happening in the UK now. But from a point of view of our business, um, three things. 
wedding planners are going to come out of this the strongest industry because even though people knew their value before now especially with the way wedding planners are juggling new date venues and vendors is like handling kittens or puppies that you know it's, it's just a skill so I, I really bow down to all the wedding planners so whatever is happening now just as everybody has said just try and keep your business together because when this all comes out which it will you're going to be in an extremely strong position number two insurance both as a business and for the couples extremely important it's now coming out the you know because people were wondering why would you do wedding insurance that's really important and the third thing is contracts they are now you know playing a huge part because um again i belong to various other groups and how strong your contract is is probably what might save your business at this point because the, some brides are moving mad but you can't blame them you know re, um demanding refunds so sometimes your contract is what's going to save you now in terms of what to do while you're here i would say um just like Matty said with what joy did if anybody can try and do that i'm also uh racking my brain i'm going to do some sort of remote cons consultation i'm going to try and do that but also instagram live everybody's doing instagram live because people have to know that you are there that's that's just but you know um dean and the group thank you very much this has been really useful i've been writing my notes and it's nice to um for me you know for people to see who i am and for me to see the faces of other people that's my two pennies worth Thank you, Yemi. That was, that was fantastic. Um, thank you for the helpful tips. Um, please let us know a little bit of what's going on with the uh, wedding industry over in New York as well, quickly, please. Okay, so um, I think because a lot of people were close to what was happening in China here, so quite frankly, from about February, people knew there was a problem. And uh, fortunately, they were not really... Uh, getting in now because I'm talking from my expertise is bridal gowns. So factories are being shot in China, which was then causing a, a problem. So brides had already started getting nervous from February here in in, in um, New York uh, or in the USA. But a lot of people are now coming together. Um, there's lots of groups just like what what's happening with you guys or you know with us. Um, but in terms of uh, the, what's causing this whole problem, it's really, really bad. And you know, people that have been in denial or saying it's just flu, as I said, we're about two weeks ahead. But what I always tell people, just look at Italy. Whatever is happening with Italy, that's you a few weeks down the line. So anybody that is in denial, well, you know, um, what can I say? Uh, from a personal point of view, there's somebody on my floor that has COVID in my building, um, I have three friends that have it. Um, one went to hospital yesterday and was sent home. So that's what normally happens. Um, so it's real, but we also have to keep our nerve and come out of it stronger. That's what I think. Wow, thank you, Yemi. Strong words there. Um, not necessarily the bringer of good news either with <laughs> telling us that basically what's happening in Italy is going to happen here. We really hope not. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and pray not to. But it's a very real thing. You know, we, we, we have to, I guess there's, there's a sense of optimism and positivity that I always uh, have just on a regular basis. But, you know, it, it has Can I been... Say one more thing have become very real yeah i would just say this is the point we've been working in our business this is the time to work on your business there are certain things that you've been planning to do but we've been almost like on a, a squirrel wheel or guinea pig wheel whatever it's called but this is almost because for my mental health any, anytime anything bad happens i have to think what's the positive this is the time to work on your business tidy things up work on your website etc etc so that you know it's all positive and that's me thanks bye thank you thank you thank you um can I, no, that was, um, do you, can I can you hear me okay so um kemi then kojo please go for it oh sorry i'm kemi hi everyone i'm a cake maker 
Uh, my advice is echoing on what you guys have said in terms of staying present on your social media. So whatever it is you do, if it's photography, post up pictures of past events. If it's cake making, post up pictures of cakes or of the process and let people know that you're still open for business. So you can still take bookings for future dates. So just because this is happening now and we're frozen officially for a three week period, you're still here for future uses. So be present, show yourself, engage with people, you know, throw out questions on your Instagram stories just so you've got engagement coming back and your face is there and people remember you when yeah. they're looking at their next set of things. So Kemi, yeah, thanks for all of your advice. Of your business, Kemi? Bye, Kemi. By Kemi, okay. Um, yeah. Go. I don't know if you um, follow Paddy Cakes. Paddy Cakes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Go and follow Paddy Cakes right now. He's like, even yesterday was it Friday at six p.m. He was making banana cake. Yeah. Right. And I, and I was watching. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I mean, I've worked with I've worked with him before in the past. He's done cakes for me, but. People are watching, yeah? Mm -hmm. you know, the, other than just posting pictures of previous events and stuff, we still have to be, like, the engagement is what is also very important. Mm -hmm. And remember, when I mean what you can give, I'm also talking about, like, okay, you know how to make cakes, teach me how to make a cake, yeah? yeah. Do fun things, and also it will help you stay sane at this time, because I'm sure, Definitely. you know, hashtag some people. So for me, that's like, there are a lot of things um, that, that that you can also do, but pad pad paddy cakes. Paddy cakes, yeah. So oh, Kemi, have a look at that. One of the other things that I'm doing is I've got a three-year-old, so a lot of parents are now dealing with their kids being at home. So I'm showing loads of videos of my daughter getting engaged and making things in the kitchen, so people can see that and emulate that as well. Yeah, no, I was just about to talk about that. So, um, so Kemi's one of my friends, and I follow her, and she's got these amazing um, um, time-lapse videos of, like, her and her daughter making stuff in the house from food to building furniture, and it's really interesting. So, Kemi, please put your links in the chat so everyone can see, please. All right, so let's move on to the next person. So let's go to Kojo. What would you like to say, sir? Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry about the noise earlier with the children. I didn't realise it was um, unmuted. Um, <laughs> So just a, just, just a few things. Um, this is really, really good, by the way, Dean. I think that um, this is an important time to review and reset um, potentially um, all of our businesses. Um, I think that this is not, unfortunately, I don't think life is going to be the same as it was before. I think there are going to be changes. And um, you spoke a little bit in terms of like the social awkwardness of people and how they're going to interact and how they may interact when like everything starts up again. But for us in terms of our industry, I think it's really, really important that when they do re release new regulations about health and safety, that we are on the ball in relation to the health and safety regulations that are going to be released, because they are going to change things in relation to how we interact. So whether you're a cake maker, even down to us as photographers, about equipment and stuff and cross-contamination and cross-handling. Um, so I think that we just need to ensure that we're reading and preparing ourselves for when the change comes, um, because there will be changes. Um, and just as long as we're ahead of the game, I think everyone will be all right. Um, none of us knows how long this process is going to last for. It could be a few weeks, it could be a few months. Um, but just as long as we get our, ourselves prepared, um, to be at the forefront of the wedding industry and looking after our customers, I think we'll be okay. Um, but it is important that we are supporting each other, talking to each other and sharing ideas about how we can improve and develop our businesses. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say, Dean. Thank you very much, Kojo. And um, Kojo, earlier this week in the group, shared some information about those who um, may become homeless during this time or, or those who know uh, anyone that is homeless and he's got some information. So please post that information in the group chat as well so people can see, because I know you work um, in housing, so, uh, or work with the council, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So please, um, yeah, please share that information. So if, if any of us know someone who is uh, homeless or struggling with housing, Kojo would be a good person to find out more information from. So um, thanks a lot. Does anyone else want to ask a question? If not, I've got another question for the panel. Okay, um, I'll go for it. So guys, um, I don't know if you saw the Chancellor's announcement on, I think it was a Tuesday, if not Wednesday. Um, 
can you guys break down what uh, it means maybe for your businesses? Do any of you benefit from it? Or do you know anyone that even that could explain it? You know, do you know any accountants or anyone in finance that could help small businesses um, really access this money? Because it, for, for a lot of people, it just seems like jargon or it's not, it's not clear exactly how we can get this money. Um, so for me, I'm definitely not an accountant, so I, I wouldn't say that I am um, the best person. But I think one of the things I'll definitely encourage anyone who's considering looking into stuff like that is go through your bank. Most of us should have a business bank account. Um, so I bank with NatWest and they actually reached out to me already um, saying because you have a business account, this is actually what the government has announced and this is what's available to you. And these are the things you need to make. So I think if you are um if you bank and you have a valid business account definitely reach your bank they probably have already gotten in touch with you so check those emails because i got two already and um, the other thing is if you're part of an association i think government is going through a lot of registered associations as well and um, especially if they're registered small business owners you know if that's the kind of their niche as well so there, there are very very clear guidelines but i think apart from the chancellor one because I'm sure that it's going to be very, very competitive. Just be aware that there's a lot of other grants available. Facebook announced one as well. Facebook and Instagram actually announced one, which isn't just limited to money. So I think and with the Facebook one, they will give you um, payment for your rent and things like that. And also they could give you free advert credits as well. So this could be something that you put towards your marketing if if that's something you've always wanted to do to run adverts on Google, they could give you a lot of credit as well that you could use. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of options out there. So don't think you're limited to that one, but definitely go for your bank would be my advice. Thanks, that was so great, Shay. Um, everyone else, so Charles, Matty, Kashi, any, um, any tips on what this government, uh, these uh, government uh, schemes can, can do for our businesses? Um, I think that they are there to help in terms of how timely this help is going to be. Um, that's um, a bit of a question mark. So I would say, and, and, and again, I'm not an accountant. Um, I haven't personally looked into any of these things for myself, but um, you know, they are there to help. However, in terms of like the time factors, it's a little bit like, because I know somebody who who is trying to go through that avenue, it's a little bit like going, applying for universal credit, which takes up to about six weeks in the first instance anyway. Um, and then in terms of like uh, small businesses and the 95 pounds that they're saying that they, they can offer uh, a, a week, that is probably not going to start coming out until um, later on in May. So the your first payment wouldn't be until May if you haven't applied in the like in these in like this week kind of thing. So um, just if you are looking into getting any of those um, into any of those government initiatives, don't just um, look at those. Just like Shay said, you know there are other places like um, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and think of what you can do and please try and try and be as resourceful as you can you know if you're going to have to wait six weeks to get a payout just think of what you can I really want to encourage you think of what you can do now even if it is for 10 pounds imagine if 100 people you know purchase a something from you for 10 pounds you know yeah that's all I have to say. That's my contribution. That's a thousand pounds for those that can't do the math. That's a thousand pounds right there. Okay, quickly, Charles and Kashi. Um, like, like ladies first, Kashi. You yeah, can... thanks, Charles. <laughs> um, yes, the, the 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 help that and the support that the government is giving is not going to be immediate. Like they've all said, uh, if you can do something creative that can make you money in the meanwhile. Um, definitely, definitely go for it. Uh, loads of people have suggested um, what you can do alongside your business, but you can try and do it virtually. What I would also say is um, if there are some skills that you have personally, and maybe that's not even what you do for business. So if you're a wedding planner, for example, and you can actually do makeup, you can do a makeup tutorial. You know, um, I know someone like Barbara, she 
she she has a business she has a wedding business but she's also a teacher she homeschools her kids so say for you know that's an example of what someone else can do so if you have a skill set that is not you know majorly what you do for business you can pick that up and you can do that virtually so do try and find means to um to make money during these times rather than just wait <laughs> Um, it, because we don't know, you know, like Matty said, you know, it may be coming in, in six weeks, you know, you want to pay your bills before then, I'm guessing your bills are probably monthly. So, you know, that's what my advice would be. And also, I'd also like to advise people to be very careful of the business interruption loan. Not because, you know, it's not there for grabs, but you have to remember that it has to be paid back. So if you can avoid, if you can drive this, you know, high seas and you can float it'd be better to stay afloat than just you know just jump on land because it's not going to go away it's not free it's going to catch up yes someone uh well it's actually uh yemi in, in in the comments says try go try going for a grant and not alone um so charles what's your thoughts on this um j just like everyone said um Nothing is free. Number two, um, sometimes when you're being presented with something, it may look so wonderful in the short term, but it might come and bite. Once the country gets back on its feet, they may come in asking questions that you might not have been prepared for. So I, I, I would simply say, if you, if you Google, there are some jobs out there, and if you're really, really struggling, there is no shame in working at your local Sainsbury's or your local Lidl for the next couple of weeks just to get some money coming in. Don't be ashamed. Don't be arrogant or prideful. Whatever you have to do to some form of income coming in, please, by all means, go for it. If you don't have any other streams of income, by the time you get around to receiving any government assistance, the damage would already have been done. So if there are any other options, take them in the short term, be it for four weeks. Supermarkets are offering short-term employment three, four, six weeks, jump on that in the, in the mid, in immediately and then think about what else you can do. If you have reserves though, I would encourage you to create, plan and get ready for what's coming next. Okay, thank you so much. Listen, we're within the last 10 minutes and I do want to get a roundup from each speaker. So very quickly, um, Kole, can you ask your question? And um, Kojo, you said you want to come on and say something very quickly as well. Please go for it. Kole or me? Yeah, okay, you go first, Kojo. All right, cool. So just very, very quickly on benefits. So I work in local government. I'm the head of housing for a local authority. Um, and I understand how benefits work. Um, and the point that Charles made is, 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 is very, very true. So what I would advise is that anybody who's applying for any type of benefit just ensure that you read the guidance notes carefully, right? And the, um, the date that you claim, um, you put in your application, the date when it will start from. So it's very rare, especially in this situation, where they'll be looking to backdate it. So if you're gonna do it from Monday, then it will be from Monday. You can't go like in a month's time and try and request it for earlier on. Um, so read the guidance notes and just make sure it doesn't have an impact on when things do come um, up and running again on what you're doing then because they can use sometimes um, other than grants especially with loans they can use um, loopholes to try and get the money back so just read the notes and ensure that what you're putting in is what actually you need and what you require um, but I, I, I agree with Charles about working wherever I worked at McDonald's for 16 years I'm proud to have worked at McDonald's for 16 years I learned a lot of my business principles there and there's no shame in going to work anywhere else in the interim if you don't really want to apply for any of the government grants or loans perfect thank you so much Kojo Kole you're gonna say you're gonna come in and say something if not, I'm gonna... Yeah, I don't know if everyone can hear me. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So basically, what I wanted to say, obviously, I've missed out on a lot because my phone has been on and off. So basically, I was going to say, you know, like Kojo just said, I put the application in now because if they're going to backdate it, they're going to backdate it to when, to when you, your application was put in. But also, I was going to say um, while uh, Kashi was talking was that, you know, what happens after now it depends on the solution that comes up to get rid of this virus, if it's going to be the 
solution of when it peaks, then everyone is quarantined and it goes away. I think people will be scared to go to events. But if there's a vaccine, which I don't see coming out in the next one year, then it might you know, be a different situation where people are more comfortable. So like also everyone has said about you know, finding something else, diversification, diverse, open, be open to um, online transaction, be open to anything you can do online, even if it means putting videos out on YouTube, YouTube still pays. So anything you can do extra, working at Tesco, working at whatever you need to do, get it done. That's my two cents. Perfect. Thank you there. That was um, Kole from Lighthouse Photography, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so quickly, uh, we've got Kashi, Shay, Matty, Charles, you've all been a fantastic panel today. Thank you. Can we just get your last roundup on this call, your one to two minutes uh, contribution on what everyone should take away from this call? Thank you. Matty, oh, okay, sorry. Go, Shay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I was going to say, no, this has been really, really useful. Thank you, Dean, for organizing. I think everyone's really said everything that I probably would have said. Um, but the one thing I do want to highlight is I know that there's a, there are a lot of vendors who, in a lot of my consultation sessions in the past, who have always said things like, I'm the underdog in this industry. People don't want to come to me first, you know, because my name isn't out there or anything. I'm not trying to put, put down anybody else, but this is your opportunity. And um, because like um, Charles actually gave an example just earlier then where he said um, somebody booked him because the MC they wanted to go for was no longer available. That is happening a lot right now. So I've been getting a lot of, okay, this is the person I wanted to book, but because they're no longer available, who else would you recommend? So there's a lot of who else, who else that's coming up. So please, please don't see this as an opportunity for you to just sit back and say, oh, things are quiet. People are looking for who to book as an alternative. And this could be the one booking that maybe will make you stand out. So please amplify your marketing. Make sure you're out there and you have your awareness on lockdown and just structure your business as much as possible so that you have recurring um, income monthly beyond this times that we're in now. That is great advice right there. Please, Matty, go on there. Um, one of the things that I would say that we didn't touch on as much, but Shay kind of mentioned it in terms of, um, and Kola also mentioned it, diversifying. So right now that there are a lot of um, free courses that people can do. If you struggle in places of like, for example, digital marketing, Google actually run a free digital marketing course. Um, like I put my assistant on it like two weeks ago. Um, so, figure out also other than um trying to maintain and keep your business afloat maybe this will be with your free time you can also equip yourself um and put more kind of tools in your box as it were so that if anything like this ever happens again god forbid um you are you are ready because yes i think the way that we do business is going to completely change um, and i don't think we will ever go back to uh, exactly the way things were um, because of how this has affected all of us in one way or the other. Um, also, one of the things that I said at the beginning in terms of uh, vendors and dealing with clients, I think be as transparent as possible with your clients, be honest, make sure your calendar is up to date. If I call you and I ask you, are you available for this date? You should be able to tell me yes or no. So make sure that your admin is together um, or at least have a, a, a calendar that is showing and reflecting exactly what it should be showing at this time. Be transparent with your, not just your um, clients, but also the other vendors that you're working with. And somebody um, had actually put a question and they said that they were finding that, um, the, some of the dates that their brides and grooms were moving to were dates that they already booked for yeah what you can do depending on what you do in that case uh, so in terms of what um uh kind of service you provide um we had we've we've had this before and um it was a photographer and that photographer wasn't necessarily available now um I booked this particular photographer, but the client. Um, Matty, I'm going to have to jump in. Okay. So, okay. I, I, do you know what? I will type and I will leave it in the EVM group. But yeah, those were my two main things. Communication, keep them clear. 
do something new, their free courses, and yeah, that was it. I, I don't mind. I don't mind going live with you on Instagram just after this, but I want to try and keep the time as much as possible. Yeah. No problem. So please, Kashi, Kashi, you go for it, and then Charles last. Okay. Um, I'd say be proactive. Um, you know, this is a very good opportunity for everyone. This is this is this is like a you're you're getting paid well for those that are getting paid or you know this is free time because like Yemi said the world was sort of in a rat race and this is sort of it's like the world's come into a halt and it's a compulsory holiday so personally keep keep your mental health in a very good state you know do do something if you have kids do gardening with the kids this is bonding time we, we, we were working nine to five raising you know and you know, 5.30, you have to pick the kids from, you know, it's just the whole world was in a rat race. And this is a, it's, it's sort of like a relaxing, reflecting time. So personally, keep your mental state in a very good position. And this would then in turn, keep your business's mental state in a very good position. So firstly, take care of yourself, um, because that's very important. And then next and pass it on to your business so you know we've given so many advices and examples here how you can keep your business afloat so make sure your business stays relevant because your business can go into depression you know so you have to just make sure you're doing something you're engaging with your clients you're staying afloat because you do not want to be that dead you do not want to be that flat out business when this all finishes so even if you have to do it for free you know not everything's about making money you, this may be a time that people will create a, a brand and people will never forget you because when during the drowning times you kept them afloat so even if it's just engaged not for money but for you know for the sake of being in touch for the sake of connecting this is a very good time and you're never going to get this amount amount of audience again you know there's so many people at home now this is the moment that, and you know you want to seize it you want to seize the moment for yourself personally and you want to seize it for your opportunity you're not going to get this time this much time with your family and friends again friends online <laughs> you know you're not going to get this this amount of time again so make sure you use it wisely first thing keep afloat with your mental health you know do something creative for your business as well thank you and keep yourself active take advantage of that one hour of exercise every single day you need to get out of the house you need to go for a run you need to sweat and you need to stay active um just before charles speaks could all of the other panelists please put your social media and your websites into the chat just so people can connect with you after this charles go for it as succinct as you can two minutes strong powerful let's take this to a really great finish <laughs> One, once again, and I'm reminding everyone, it's a scary time for some. It's a unique time. We've never experienced this before, not in our lifetime. But what, what are you going to come out of this having achieved? One thing I'm doing now is I'm going back over all my goals over the last two, three years. Which ones haven't I yet achieved? I can achieve them during this process or I can get the ball rolling. How many goals do you have that you haven't yet finished or accomplished? Can you do them now? Some of us want to write a book. If you start writing for 30 minutes a day for the next 30 days, your book will almost be 75% complete. Do something you've wanted to do for a while that you've never had the time to do it. Remember that every problem does have an expiry date. This shall come to pass. You're not going to die in this process, but please don't be prideful. If you need help, I'm talking about desperate help. I'm not talking about, you know, the other kind of help that people like to take advantage of. Call, cry out, call out, say, listen, I need 50 pounds. Can you lend me 100 pounds? But use this time to create. Use this time to do something new. Use this time to prepare. So when all this is over, you have something fresh to bring to the market. There's only so much Netflix you can watch. But um, this is going to pass. This is going to pass. Maximize this moment now so that when we finish, you have something fresh to offer to the marketplace. And please, once again, if you need to work in a job that you may consider yourself to be above, not in this season. If you've got to work in Sainsbury's, go work in Sainsbury's. If you've got to do an £8.50 an hour job, go do it. If you have to do a bit of night security, everything it's for a season, rainbows come after school. 
Perfect. That was beautiful. And you guys need to follow Charles Emeka one on Instagram as well to hear more of his messages. And guys, we're going to bring it to an end right here. We could easily speak for the whole day. I could speak to each and every one of these speakers for an hour and a half easily. Um, there's you know so much to talk about right now, but I just want to try and end this here. We probably will be going back um, online again next week with some uh, you know different panelists, different speakers. But thank you everyone that came online today. We had uh, just over 40 people at one point, which is really encouraging. And one thing about me is I love bringing people together. I love um, building communities, whether that's online or offline. And uh, I'm really grateful to be able to have this conversation with you guys today. I learned a lot myself. And we are gonna end this right here. Thank you to the Elite Vendors Network. Thank you to um, those who are not yet in the network but you'll have an opportunity to join soon, I'm sure. And uh, have a good afternoon, everyone. Stay safe, stay well, stay sanitized. Take care. Thanks, Bye-bye. Dan. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Oh, I can bring my kids back downstairs, poor people. Let me go see if mine have eaten each other. <laughs> <Can't see. laughs> Charles. <laughs> See you later. No more weddings Can for me, you, Charles. Care. Bye. I need, I need, I need, my, my money is running low. I need more weddings. More weddings. We can do an online wedding. Yes. See you guys later. That's the only wedding. Bye. Bye.